Oh, hey, welcome to hell. Looks like you stumbled on down here with me. While we're here, you know, boiling, let's talk about the Doom movies. The massively popular and influential video game Doom, you've probably heard of it. Well, they made two movies about the games. How are they? Not that good, but hey, what's perfect out there? You know what I mean? Definitely not these movies. Let's just say they have some problems. From a severely underpowered BFG, to blue man group zombies, to a weird first person movie game sequence, they're admittedly a fun time, but also kind of difficult to take seriously. Let's start with the movie from 2005, simply titled Doom. It stars Dwayne The Rock Johnson, Carl Urban, and Rosamund Pike. It was directed by this person. I can't say that. Props to him because I read that he wanted to keep the computer effects to a minimum. If there is a possible way to make a scene with practical effects, he was going to do it that way. And I think that's a pretty admirable way to go about making a movie like this. Especially when compared to today's Hollywood when we get movies like Ant-Man 3. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> and to be honest, the practical effects look pretty good most of the time. On IMDb, The Rock plays a guy named The Sarge, but in parentheses, it says The Rock. Is his name in the movie The Rock as well? Like, is that his character's nickname? Kind of like how Carl Urban's character in the movie has the nickname Reaper. Did they choose The Rock as The, the Rock's nickname? <laughs> Did they decide that? I don't know, that's kind of stupid. I don't think anybody calls him The Rock in the movie. I wish they did, that'd be funny. Thank you so much to Displate for sponsoring this video. Have you ever been watching one of my videos and thought, man, those posters behind him are pretty cool. I wish I could get one. Thanks to today's sponsor, Displate, today's your lucky day because I can tell you exactly how you can do that. You're still using paper to hang art on your walls? What are you, from ancient Egypt? Get with it, girl! Get yourself a Displate. Displate are unique metal posters designed to capture all of your passions. If you like something, then odds are there's a Displate of it. They have tons of officially licensed designs from games, movies, shows, you name it. Whether it be Marvel, Elden Ring, Skyrim, whatever you want. Hanging them up is tool free, very simple, and takes practically no time at all. Each display comes with a magnet kit, so everything you need comes in the box. No drilling, no holes, no frustration. Firstly, you clean the space on your wall where you want to hang it. You place down your protective sticker leafs, and then put the magnets on top of those, and you're ready to go. Just plop the display on. And the best part is, if it's crooked, you can easily just alter the way it looks on your wall, so it's not crooked anymore. And you can swap the display anytime you want. Say you don't like that design? Easy. Take it down, put something else up. Displate offers fast delivery and should arrive in four to five business days. Displate is also launching a new product line called Displate Textra. They have tactile textures, 3D contours, and you can select matte or gloss effects. And they'll be available on hundreds of best-selling displates. So go to displate.com slash Alien or click the link at the top of the description and check out designs with the new Textra finish. Thank you so much to Displate for sponsoring this video. Now back to the review. When you think of the Doom games, you probably think of one of two things. The classic 1993 Doom, or 2016's Doom, and 2020's Doom Eternal. You probably don't think of this. Which is a shame because this movie is based on... this. There were many different scripts written for various movie adaptations of Doom, all of which were supposedly much closer to the original games than the final movie that we got. Alan B. McElroy and Dean LeRae are two such writers. Both of their scripts were rejected. I mean, they could have been sh They were probably rejected for a reason. Doom 2005 does not feel like a Doom movie in the beginning. I think this is mostly because it follows the release of the Xbox 360's Doom 3, which was released in 2005. And the movie bases itself off of that game in many ways. In that game, you play as an anonymous Marine who arrives at the UAC's Mars base to investigate strange disturbances. It's definitely not one of the more influential Doom games out there. Doom Guy doesn't exist in this movie, and it results in it feeling like a stereotypical sci-fi zombie movie with some Doom guns and monsters. It feels more like Resident Evil or Ridley Scott's Alien. Granted, there are zombies in Doom, but I don't know. Whenever you think of Doom monsters, you never think of the dumb zombies, you know? At least I don't. You're more likely to think of the Caco Demon, or the Cyber Demon, or the Baron of Hell, or the Mancubus, the Hell Knights, the Imps, 
I mean, there's so much to choose from. And this movie was like zombies. It's not until nearly 45 minutes in until we see our first demon. And it turns out that they're not actually demons. They're people that have been genetically mutated, but I'll be calling the monster looking ones demons anyway. The intro Doom logo in this movie is pretty cheesy, but I think this type of thing wasn't too uncommon back in the early 2000s. Maybe I'm wrong, I don't remember. It's been a while. According to IMDb, the film setting is at a dig site called Old Dubai on Mars. Earth's Old Dubai Gorge was the setting for the opening scenes of 2001 A Space Odyssey. So I thought that was a pretty neat little nod. Right away, this movie reminds me of Aliens. We're introduced to a crew of men, each with a unique personality, and they're all sent on a mission to secure a facility on Mars. Even the sets look like they're straight out of an Alien movie. One of the soldiers is playing a game on a giant Game Boy looking thing. What year is it again in this movie? Because they're able to fly to Mars, but this is what they're gaming on. <laughs> the way they get to Mars is pretty cool though. They enter this reflective bubble thing that teleports them there. Immediately after arriving, this freak named Portman starts verbally harassing a bunch of women. You might recognize the guy who plays Portman, Richard Brake. He's also in Barbarian, Kingsman the Secret Service, and the Mandalorian TV series. The nicknames for all the Marines are pretty epic. Reaper, Destroyer, Sarge, The Rock, Duke, Goat, and then Portman. <laughs> They probably just referred to him as his last name because he's the weirdo of the group. This is the guy they all suspect is probably a rapist or worse. So I am just gonna have to strip search you girls. But they have no proof of that, so they just keep him around as a meat shield. After arriving on Mars, they start investigating the facility. At around 15 minutes, when Samantha Grimm unlocks the first door using the electric keypad, the key tones match the five iconic notes from Close Encounters of the Third Kind. I love it when movies do that. They put little Easter eggs in, you know, for people who catch on to them. There's a scene where John finds out that kids' eyes are dilated and they're in a near pitch black sewer. He does flash a light near his face, but still dude, I don't think you'd be able to notice. Later in the movie, Samantha and Duke start flirting, but it's kind of weird because while flirting, she's operating on a literal demon corpse that no human has ever encountered before. These two people are not acting like this thing was killed that same day and that there could be more of the same thing on the base with them. Not only that, her co-workers are either dead or turned into zombies. It's so weird that they're flirting. The other scientists in this movie, Dr. Todd Carmack and Dr. Willits, are references to Todd Hollinshed, John Carmack, and Tim Willits, who are all co-owners of id Software, the company that made the Doom games. I swear to God, the only reason The Rock took this role is so he could pretend he got to use a BFG. And I mean, who can blame him, right? That's pretty cool. It's pretty funny how Destroyer tries using one of those ancient cube computer monitors against a demon. Like he swings it around at them. <laughs> he literally attacks one of them with one of these massive computer monitors. And it's so funny to think that they'd be using these huge monitors still when, you know, we can travel to Mars. I'm on my way to Mars, babe. Let me pack my computer. Puts this massive cube into a briefcase. <laughs> the entire fight between Destroyer and this demon makes little sense to me. There are definitely moments when they're fighting when he should have been incapacitated, but he kept on fighting anyway. He's held up against an electric wall, but he can still use his arm to stab the demon. What? It reminds me of that scene from The Hangover. When the kid electrifies Zack. But it doesn't work, he just keeps walking forward. <laughs> He's like, shoot him again! <laughs> During this fight, Destroyer flips over the demon and it's so unrealistic. How did he do that? He takes a giant pipe and rams it straight through the demon and impales him onto this wall. What ends up killing Destroyer is uh, fall damage. I'm not joking. <laughs> he takes too much fall damage. He just plummets and oof, you know? Dead. I love how this dude's name is Destroyer, and he carries a giant minigun around with him. But earlier in the movie, he shit his pants at the sight of a monkey in a vent. <laughs> Moving on. So remember the creepy dude Portman? He's kept alive longer than a lot of the other men, and it's silly. He should have been the first one to die, and I think that's obvious. There's a moment early on when he falls in a hole, and I jumped for joy. Oh boy, yes. 
Get that guy out of here, only for the other men to pull him out to safety. Why would they do that? They could have easily just gotten rid of him right there. Let him flounder, dude. We don't want this guy around. Portman does eventually get grabbed by a demon and killed. His death is broadcast to this other guy who then laughs while he's dying, so I guess that works. <laughs> That's actually hilarious. When The Rock shoots the BFG, it must actually be the BFG Mini because it isn't nearly as powerful as it should be, compared to its video game counterpart anyway. At this lab, they were experimenting with the 24th chromosome that has the ability to turn people into superhumans. Also, Carl Urban has a mole above his right eyebrow in this movie. Mole. And it isn't there in his more recent role as Billy Butcher in the show The Boys. Where's that mole? <laughs> Did he get that mole removed? Why'd you get that mole removed, Carl Urban? Huh? I like that mole. What'd you do with it? Also, I love this scene. Oh, there's something behind me, isn't there? <laughs> there's something behind me, isn't there? <laughs> also near the end of this movie, there's a dispute among the Marines about whether or not they should evacuate the uninfected civilians or kill them all to contain the infection. By any means necessary. Zombies infiltrate in high numbers during the third act and Duke gets pulled into a vent in the floor and the CGI blood that sprays up after he's pulled in there doesn't look realistic at all. Now I know the director wanted to use mostly practical effects, but how much of the budget do you think he spent on the CGI? 50 bucks. $50. No, I'm just, I'm just joking. <laughs> but it looks like it, you know? He just found some dude on Craigslist and he's like, I need you to do a job for me. I think it's pretty silly that Sarge didn't have any of his men guard the gateway back to Earth. Instead, they all search the facility, which allows the zombies to use the portal to get back to Earth. His mission was to prevent the spread of this organism and he fails miserably to do so. He couldn't even keep one guy near the portal. Just put Portman back there, you know? Although they probably wanted him dead, so. Yes, very sad. Anyway. All right, I'm gonna be honest. After rewatching the first person scene, it's not as bad as I remember. I think I said in a previous review, I think it was the Jiu-Jitsu review, that dumb Nick Cage movie. Check me. There's a first person scene in that movie that's way worse than this one. It's like that Doom movie. Remember when they go into like that random video game sequence? It's really awful. For some reason, I remember it being bad, but after re-watching it, I thought it was pretty cool, dude. But it does go on for way too long. It should have been this cute, quick little thing, but no. It goes on and on and on. Oh my God, we get it, dude. It was cool at first. I wanna see something else now. I'm done. I'm not playing a game, you know? It'd be cool if like in the middle of the movie, they were like, pick up your controller. It's time to play. <laughs> Can you imagine? That'd be kind of cool, right? If in the future, movies and games kind of like do this. I'm sure there are already games like that. Maybe in the future, games and movies will become so like entwined that you'll expect to be able to play certain parts of the movie. <laughs> you have your controller ready like, oh my God, when's it gonna go? But yeah, I think it's cute and a pretty cool way to pay homage to the games. Also, according to IMDb, it took 14 days to shoot this part, which is pretty crazy. 14 days of nothing but a camera strapped to this guy's chest while he's walking around with a gun through hallways. Near the end of this movie, it feels a lot more like Doom until Sarge shoots the BMG and misses. How? Hold on, bro. How? You don't even have to aim that thing, dude. Just shoot at the wall nearest your opponent and run for your life. Later, Sarge has a goofy line that has been memed considerably since. He says, Semper Fi, mother- I can't swear. YouTube doesn't like it when I swear. They don't give me money if I swear. Semper Fi, mother- Reaper's name is John, by the way. Sarge and John have a little fight. It's not the worst thing in the world, but it's far from the best. They're both infected with this extra chromosome, so they're both super strong. John uses the teleporter and grenade to kill Sarge. I find it strange that the tagline for this movie is, no one gets out alive, when technically two people make it out alive at the end. And what's more, during the end credits, when the cast members' names appear on the screen, the only ones that aren't destroyed are the only two who survive in the movie. I also read that a nuclear explosion sequence on Mars was filmed but not used in the final cut. Can you imagine filming a nuclear explosion and then not using it? What? How could you not use it? I mean, just throw it in there, why not? Everybody likes when things blow up, dude. 
just blow something up. Overall, I think this movie fails because the people whose lives are at risk, I didn't care about. The movie tries to give John and Samantha a backstory, but it's lacking in substance. This movie's plot felt trite and vapid to me. We've all seen better movies with similar plots. The acting was also pretty average, Nothing horrendous, but nothing great either. Doom Annihilation, baby. Hell yeah, let's go. This time, written and directed by Tony Giglio. This guy has a pretty funny last name. Giglio. <laughs> if I knew this guy, I would just call him Giglio. He should open like a coffee shop or a comedy club. That makes sense. Welcome to the Giglio, where you'll get the giggle. <laughs> I'm sorry. Based on reviews alone, this guy doesn't have the best track record. He made the movie Extraction and some random SWAT movie. I will never see either of them. According to the official Doom video game Twitter account, the video game series creators were not involved with the making of the movie, despite being asked to help with the film. They declined and wished them luck. What a kick in the balls, dude. Imagine making a movie based on a game, but the people who made the game Refused to help you with any aspect of the movie. That would suck. One of the actresses in this movie is Amy Manson, but she's credited as Amy Mason in the opening credits, but her name is spelled correctly in the end credits. <laughs> in the opening scenes, it states UAC stands for United Aerospace Corporation, but in the Doom games, UAC stands for Union Aerospace Corporation. Huge mistake. How could they get this wrong? It's probably because the game devs refused to help them. I don't know, maybe they changed it on purpose to mix things up. The movie starts in a secret lab in the Nevada desert. A scientist sends a man through a hell gate. And this gate looks like something from a theme park. Like, come on, dude, there's clearly red LEDs in that plastic smooth shell. This hell gate looks like shit. So this guy enters the beautiful CGI goopy gate and returns a demon or a zombie. At least I think that's what they were going for. But he really just looks like he's in a metal band about to film a music video. He's transformed, I guess. But when I say transformed, I mean his skin is slightly paler and dirtier. His hair turned gray. He has black lipstick on and he cries black like Billie Eilish in that one music video. Oh, and his teeth are bad. Going to Phobos made him British. I don't want to go shaky, man. And his scream is so goofy. <laughs> We're then introduced to this woman named Joan Dark, whose mother has died based on a memory we're shown. Really? Joan Dark? You guys aren't being super subtle about this, are you? It's a little close to Joanna Dark, don't you think? They should have just went all out and put Joanna Dark from Perfect Dark in this movie. That'd be cool. And then give her an alien friend named Elvis. When the pilot of the UAC Marine ship is introduced, he says consciousness so weird. I am your pilot welcoming you back to consciousness. We get the whole alien space crew thing going on in this movie too. One of the guys is playing a shitty VR shooter. I guess this is a little bit better than a Game Boy from the first movie, but not by much. I mean, just look at the game he's playing. <laughs> At around 16 minutes in, Captain Hector mentions that it's impossible to dream while you're in hypersleep, even though it's heavily implied that Joan was dreaming in her introduction scene. So the crew is on their way to Phobos, one of the Martian moons. Captain Savage gives the crew the rundown, and he's telling them super basic stuff that they should definitely already know. Can you imagine training for years for a space mission you know nothing about, getting on the spaceship, blasting off into space, getting put into cryosleep, and then being told when you woke up, all right, this is what we're doing. <laughs> Maybe he's just reminding them or something. They arrive at the Phobos research facility. The base goes offline. So Captain Savage tells them it's their mission to get it up and running again. And one guy says, why? Oh, I don't know. Maybe because we're on a fucking Martian moon. What? Really, dude? Why? We don't need power. The music when the team is arming themselves is so bad. It sounds like generic garage band metal riff number 12. Real Rock FM. Later, this guy named Bennett tells Joan that the reserve power is at 2%. And Joan replies, is that bad? What? What do you mean is that bad? Why are all these people acting like toddlers? Huh? All right, Joan, let me explain this to you. Okay. Two is a low number. 2%? That's low. Do you know how I know? It's closer to 1% than it is to 100%. <laughs> what? Is that bad? Is that bad? What do you mean? We only have 2% power? 
Is that bad? The first UAC corpse they find is named William Blackowitz. This is the same name of the protagonist from the game Wolfenstein, also made by id Software. The team enters a stereotypical yellow sci-fi hallway, where Bennett tells the captain that if the structure loses power, it'll result in a core meltdown, which will destroy the base and the moon itself. I'm unsure how losing power would cause a meltdown and destroy everything, but okay. Okay, sure, let's say that losing power will cause a meltdown and blow up the station. Why would that blow up the moon too? Like, I know the moon is tiny, but come on. Really? I doubt that would happen. Winslow, the annoying Australian character, reacts exactly how I did. Who the fuck designed this place? So they make their way down a multitude of hallways. Each of these look like they're made for a laser gun fighting arena. I'm pretty positive they use the same hallway multiple times in this movie, but with different lighting. Eventually, they find a key card that looks like it came packaged with a Nerf gun. Although I guess the key cards are based on the key cards from the games. I'll cut them slack right now. They do got some big goofy key cards in the games too. I guess it's a cute nod okay it's fine also we get to see what they see through their visors and they have a mini map like in a video game it's very cute movie i get it it's cute it's a gay movie i didn't say gay movie i said game movie this movie isn't gay okay Maybe it's a little gay. What did he say? There's a moment when Lee aims her gun directly at another Marine by accident, and he just stands there. That's a great way to get shot in the face by accident. Good job. Eventually they find zombies, and it turns out the members of the Blue Man group sniff some bath salts. No, but for real, why are they blue? We learn that a dead scientist is named John Carmack, and this is in honor of John Carmack, one of Doom 1993's co-creators. This also doubles as a reference to one of the scientist characters in the first film. Hey, I've seen this one. There's a living scientist woman on this base, and she tells the Marines, we have a situation. We have a situation. Oh, oh you, you don't say. <laughs> Oh, really? She says this, then she's bit in the neck by a zombie. The zombie is instantly shot dead, but the scientist woman died basically immediately. It's so weird. I'm not sure if that would actually happen. I doubt it. Also, the Marines split up into tiny groups, and the movie swaps back and forth between them. But they're all in the same basic area of the facility, so their surroundings look near identical to one another. It makes this entire part kind of confusing. Also, why is this place so blue? Was that a thing in the games? There are blue lights everywhere. The zombies are blue. The steel grate walkways and appliances are painted blue, mixed in with yellow ladders. I get the yellow ladder thing. Pretty funny movie. There's a moment when Sergeant Logan's rifle makes a Gatling gun noise. When he isn't using a gun that should make that noise. And it's kind of weird. There's a scene when they try to make Joan into a badass. She kills a ton of zombies with two pistols. She uses a knife and then a chainsaw later on. I guess Joan Dark is Doom Guy in this movie. It is pretty neat to imagine Joanna Dark in the Doom universe. So maybe this movie is based on a mod that someone made. <laughs> the next scene is so funny. The Marine Akua says, Oh, you ultra nightmare, motherfuckers. Do you guys get it? He says this and then he instantly dies. I'm your ultra nightmare mother fool. I gotta say, this movie has a lot of characters and practically none of them have a personality aside from angry Aussie guy, scientist guy, serious captain, and badass lady that everyone underestimates. Oh yeah, and there's French girl. That's her only personality trait. She's French. Oh, and her hair's blue. Of course it is, because everything's blue. Nobody in this movie feels like a real person aside from maybe Joan, but even she doesn't feel entirely developed. The action in this movie is like a 6 out of 10. Very average stuff. The captain's action scene in particular, before he's overrun by zombies, was pretty cool, I thought. If only he didn't insist on using a double barrel shotgun. <laughs> what are you doing, dude? Earlier in this movie, Akua even comments on how his gun choice is idiotic. Well, he actually uses the term weak. But the gun isn't really weak, is it? If you get shot with a double barrel shotgun, you're gonna know it. The problem is... It has two shots. <laughs> Dr. Betruger, the scientist from the beginning of the movie, comments on how the gates are 7,500 years old, and they're made from an identified chemical compound. Oh, you mean plastic? Th that was, that's clearly plastic. Also, Dr. Betruger's name is German, and means cheater or scammer. 
which is kind of cute because it foreshadows him betraying the other characters. These gates are the greatest discovery in the history of mankind. I will not allow it! Calm down, it was just a joke! According to IMDb, a few characters in the film, including scientists, incorrectly refer to fusion reactors and nuclear power interchangeably, even though they're not the same thing. I really hope somebody got fired for that blunder. Their ship's AI turns on them somehow, and then some demons find their way aboard the marine ship. These demons resemble imps from the games. But not entirely, they're like a new, weird interpretation of an imp. They throw fireballs like an imp, but in this movie they can also turn humans into zombies. I'm not sure if they can do that in the games. Probably not. I have to admit, they were pretty cool looking. There's this priest guy who bonds with Joan and even saves her, but I didn't care about him at all. And there's a scene where Winslow and the French girl Carly fight a second imp, and the editing here is atrocious. How many cuts are there during this part? Let's count them, shall we? <laughs> Cut my movie into pieces! Oh my god, why'd I do that? At the end of the movie, it turns out the evil scientist is, in fact, evil. And he bamboozles the marines and traps them. Of course, the movie needs to implement the BFG, so Joan finds it and prepares herself to use it. It's so obviously a big plastic gun, though. It looks like a giant Nerf gun with the orange tip removed. And she holds it so weird, too. Why is she grasping the top of it like that? What are you doing? <laughs> Somehow the scientist Bennett survived for most of the movie. Well, most of the movie. How are the scientists surviving? Of course the BFG can't function like it does in the games, because if it did, then it would destroy everything. Even still, the way it functions in the movie is still extremely dangerous. Shooting this thing in a facility on Phobos is such a bad idea, dude. She has no idea what it's capable of, but she still uses it. Very smart. Joan of Arc. I just, I don't know, that just came out. When Joan finds the evil scientist, zombie version of Bennett is there and he looks so funny. Dr. Betruger aims a gun at Joan, only for Joan to take it and shoot him. He wakes up and reveals that he doesn't have a heart and he has superpowers? He has like psychic abilities and he uses them to push Joan into a portal? Yeah, he can use the force now, I guess. I suppose he forgot that he could use it until just now. She arrives in hell with her plastic BFG in hand. The CGI in hell is bad, but it also gives off this campy vibe that I kind of dig. Joan is literally breathed on by a demon and is defeated. <laughs> Rip, bozo. The demon starts talking to Joan, like it starts talking trash about humans, and it even calls Joan by name, which is weird. And then Joan has a flashback of her mom, and it gives her the strength she needs to stand up and use the BFG against the Hellspawn, until she runs out of ammo and pulls a golem and jumps into a lava pit. That's it, that's the end of the movie, she's dead. Not the best movie in the world. I would say it's like a five, four, out of 10, maybe a three, somewhere in there, a three to five. Depending on my mood, I suppose. Hey, do you like this shirt, dude? It's pretty sick. You can get it at AlienClothing.com. A-Y-Y-L-I-E-N Clothing.com. Download our app to get new releases and new deals before anybody else. It's on iOS and Android. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. You guys thought that was actually the end of the second movie? I bet the people who watched this movie are super confused right now. <laughs> They're like, I'm pretty sure that didn't happen at the end. What actually happens at the end is this. She finds a very convenient portal and throws some plasma grenades into the horde before arriving in the Nevada UAC experimental lab. And then we find out that this lab is about to be overrun by demons. And then the movie ends. So yeah, uh, humanity is doomed and that's doom, annihilation the movie. This is the real end of the video now. Goodbye.